only mode. Yes, madam. Please go ahead. This is Lakshmi Virya, Associate Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Vignans Institute of Information Technology. I welcome you all for the Big Data Analytics IUC webinar. Uh, we will have a discussion regarding a Big Data and Hadoop. Uh, what is Big Data and how the Hadoop plays a vital role in the Big Data analysis? So all these things we are going to discuss in today's topic. So in today's topic, these are the contents we are going to cover. That is, what is big data, limitations of existing solutions, solving the problem with Hadoop, introduction to Hadoop, and the most important part is Hadoop ecosystem. What are the eco components are there in the Hadoop? That thing we are going to cover. And if time permits, we are going to cover uh, the core components and uh, HDFS architecture, how the map reduce job execution happens, what are the anatomies of uh, file read and write, all these things we are going to cover. Uh, but uh, if the time per permits, then only we can go for uh, MR uh, code execution and all. Uh, so let us start uh, the most important uh, worldwide famous uh, concept that is big data. So what is a big data? A big data is nothing but a lots of data which is measured in terms of terabytes and petabytes is called as big data. So generally, uh, the big data consists of uh, structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data. So these are all uh, the various kinds of data is a combination of uh, big data. So generally, we define the big data in terms of collection of data sets so large and complex that it becomes uh, difficult to process using uh, the traditional uh, data processing applications. Like uh, we used to process the database management uh, uh, tools by using the Oracle or SQL Server, something like that. We used to perform uh, 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 small issues of analytics. But uh, we are facing a lot of problems in handling the traditional data processing. What kind of challenges we are facing here is capturing is difficult. The most important is storage is difficult becomes difficult, transferring of files is difficult, and the major part is analysis itself is difficult, and visualization part is difficult. So these are all the major challenges which are present with the uh, big data, which cannot be possible with the traditional data processing applications. Right now, systems and enterprises generates huge amount of data, which is measured in terms of terabytes and petabytes of information. So short and sweet, what is a big data? A big data is nothing but a lots of data which is, which is measured in terms of terabytes and petabytes is a big data. The big data basically consists of unstructured data, semi-structured data, all these data combination is a, a big data. Uh, we will discuss about uh, what uh, these uh, terabytes and petabytes consists of, all these things. So. Uh, a big data is nothing but in a short uh, and sweet manner, it's a data set so large and complex that it becomes difficult to process using the traditional data processing applications. So what are the solutions are there for all these things? We are going to see uh, one by one in the next slides. Right. Just uh, for an understanding's sake, I have given an image here. This is the image of New York Stock Exchange market. So what this New York Stock Exchange market is saying that is it is generating nearly one terabyte of data per trade per a day to perform the stock trading analysis. My God. So what it is the what this image is showing that is it is generating nearly one terabyte of data per trade in a day. So from from New York Stock Exchange itself, we are getting one terabyte of data per trade in a uh, per, uh, to perform the stock market. There are different zones are there in the world. Where from where uh, from that locations also we are going to get lots and lots of data. So just for an example sake, uh, I have shown you the New York Stock Exchange market, and this is an example, and I am proving that how the big data is generating a uh, more in the world. So 
we can see the graph here and in the through this graph i would like to uh, uh, show that how the unstructured data is exploited so we can see here from 1970 this is a graph uh, the blue color is indicating the blue color is indicating that there is a only growth of relational data that is also very slowly it is growing that is called as what these are all your business transaction data so what are relational data here relational data are nothing but simple Uh, structured data are called as your relational data mm -hmm. and these relational data are growing very slowly there is no drastic changes but with concern to complex and unstructured data you can see here from 1990 onwards there is a drastic change in the generation of complex and unstructured data so what is this complex and unstructured data it basically consists of it basically consists of data from facebooks twitters these are all the data which is increasing and increasing more and it is unable to handle them but with concern to relational data that is called as structured data and all which is very slow with why it is slow because we can get the structured data from the enterprise level from the system generation level only that part only hardly we can have what the school maintenance systems or uh, the business transactions very small things we are going to find in the relational data that is called structured data so with this uh, graph we are proving that the generation of unstructured data is exploiting more compared to the structured data but one thing i would like to tell you uh, the big data does not only consists of complex and unstructured data the big data is a collection of structured complex unstructured is a combination of all together so uh, 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 analysis is uh, saying that nearly 2000 500 exabytes of new information in 2015 with internet as a primary driver so this is the analysis of 2012 but if you take the analysis of 2015 <clears throat> obviously it will be more and more so uh, this graph is showing that how the generation of complex and unstructured data is increasing more and more that we are demonstrating here we can see yeah so ibm has defined the big data as a uh, big data is nothing but a big data is always bigger in volume it is increasing and increasing we are increasing its increasing size so big data is increasing in volume 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 so it's increasing so ibm has defined the big data as so big data is bigger in volume big data is bigger in velocity big data is bigger in variety so from big data aspect we can get the big data from web logs from audio files from videos sensor data images so these are all your varieties of data which you find from the big data so ibm has defined <coughs> big data as big data is always in bigger in volume big data is bigger in velocity big data is bigger in variety, uh, variety. so in this manner the big data has defined the the ibm has defined the definition for the big data right now we can see uh, the big data customer scenarios what is big data customer scenarios big data customer scenarios are nothing but from where from big zone we are getting uh, a lot of data so that is called as the common customers so from big zone we are getting the uh, big data that is that is called as the big data customer scenarios so not only from computer science and engineering world we are getting the big data from every part from every corner we are getting the big data that is the reason there is a, uh, a big and heavy importance for the big data in the uh, in the research and environment also there is a lot of research work is has been taking place uh, for the big data because uh, the generation of big data is not only not only concerned with one area it is from all the parts so let us see who are generating the big data and who are the customers of big data let us see this so from web and e dialing also from web and e dialing also uh, there is a generation of big data so how uh, the generating of big data is happening from the web and e dialing whenever we are browsing our machines uh, uh, we have a lots of uh, ads we have a lot of searching quality so all these things are generating lots and lots of big data and everybody is aware of ebay and right now ebay is a company which is generating uh, big data from the web and e dialing uh, part so ebay is the company which is generating big data from the web and e dialing part 
big data is generating from telecommunications also so from telecommunication aspect we are having a cdr analysis calling data record analysis so if you take the example of cdr analysis from one number from one cell number how many calls has been happened and from one cell number how many calls has been happened uh, happened for uh, one particular number and how many minutes he or he or she has spoken so all those things are going to be recorded in the cdr analysis so that is all also a, a big data which is also a unstructured data it does not consist of any structural information so big data is generating from tele telecommunication side also so from the entire world right now china mobile is the company which is generating big data with concern to the telecommunication so from web and e-tail in part, who is the customer? eBay is a customer which is generating lots of big data. And from the telecommunications side, China Mobile is a company which is generating lots of big data from the telecommunications side. There are other big data customers are there. Of course, government is also generating big data. Big data. So how the government is generating big data is uh, we have Aadhaar cards. So Aadhaar is has generated lots of big data. Uh, from the last uh, two years uh, scenario if you will take. Previously, we don't used to have Aadhaar card. We used to have only some sort of ration card used to have. And in that ration card, we don't used to have all other things. Only hardly we used to have the image of the entire family. That's all. And the, uh, the, address, uh, the address proof, all, all those things used to be there. But now if you take the example of Aadhaar card, apart from that previous old ration card, we have got so many more things in the Aadhaar card. Like we are having the eyelid ball our information thumb information is there our thumb information our image that means what in the previous ration card the whole family used to be there in the one ration card but now in every individual has got the other so Aadhaar has generated lots of big data so what is the benefit of this Aadhaar the benefit of this Aadhaar is nothing but we can uh, provide a proper welfare schemes for the really who is ex who, who wants because everybody is associated with one unique Aadhaar so one unique number so who is really uh, 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 deserve for the welfare schemes and uh, the fraud detection can be applicable the proper justice can be given so Aadhaar also has generated big data so we can say that in a short and sweet manner the government also generated the big data so uh, in the whole world in the whole country uh, previous uh, one year and two year onwards we have seen how people were struggling for the Aadhaar and now everybody has got this Aadhaar and Aadhaar has generated lots of big data. Big data is uh, generated from the healthcare and life science also. So how healthcare and life sciences have generated big data? So next bio is the biggest company who has generated the uh, big data with concern to healthcare and life sciences. So how uh, uh, big data has generated from healthcare and life sciences is frankly speaking uh, the more big data has generated from this zone more compared to the uh, previous uh, telecommunication or from the web of course the web part also generated more and more amount of uh, big data but with concern to healthcare and life sciences there is a lot of generation of uh, big data uh, uh, for an understanding purpose let us take one example for instance uh, in, in a hospital uh, analysis is going to be has to be taken part like how many patients uh, regularly visiting with the diabetics how many patients are regularly visiting with the BP and how many patients are uh, visiting the hospital with cancer, what kind of cancers, all these things. So there are not general uh, things. But if you take the example of swine flu, swine flu will not come in the whole year. Swine flu will come in the month of November, December, January, February. So in the, the time of cool uh, time, the, the generation of more swine flu cases will be there. So by taking the analysis of that, the healthcare systems, uh, the pharmaceutical companies started, uh, starts their production of uh, vaccines for the swine flu. If they, without pro performing the proper analysis, if they keep on producing the vaccines for the swine flu and all, the company will win the loss. That is why there, there should be a proper analysis. 
even that is a part of swine flu even for the diabetic also if you if you take an example every year uh, uh, the country celebrates the diabetic day the world celebrates the diabetic day and on that day the uh, the, uh, the, the they give a statement that uh, uh, in this year there are so many, this many cases who are arrived and uh, what are the reasons of all those things so it's going to be shown so that is for, that is going to play a vital role that uh, people are going to get the information regarding the diabetic and what kind of uh, preventions has to be taken what kind of care has to be taken so this is the responsibility of the government to take care about the citizens so all these things are generating big data right so healthcare and life sciences are also generating a big data and next bio is a company which is generating generating lots of uh, big data with concern to the healthcare and life sciences big data customers still uh, still if you continue uh, even from banks and financial services also generating big data the world's uh, biggest financial service jp morgan chase is a company this company is generating uh, lots of big data with concern to banks and financial services so uh, i believe that almost all part of the area we have covered we have covered the web part we have covered the telecommunication part we have covered the web and e-tailing part, we have covered the telecommunication part, the telecommunication is also generating big data and government also generating big data, healthcare and life science also generating big data, banks and financial services also generating big data. Now coming to the retail point here, so retail point also generating lots of big data. If you take the examples of uh, retail here, there is a sentiment analysis is there. For example, uh, just to have an explanation regarding how the uh, big data is generating with concern to retail and by taking the example of sentiment analysis, generally uh, people will buy the gold but there is a purchase of gold will be more during on special occasion like uh, uh, some uh, days like Akshay Tritya or uh, Dhan Teras. these are all some uh, important days in country like India. So where people like to focus on purchasing of gold on those days that is called the sentiment analysis. So on that date, on that date, so there is a, there will be more purchase of gold with with concern to whatever the uh, uh, the product rate and all. But the, to focus towards the sentiment, uh, the, the people the people uh, starts buying more amount of gold. So that is also a generation of big data uh, with concern to retail. A small example I'm giving, but uh, if you take the point of sales transactions and all and customer churn analysis and all if you take there is a lot of big data analysis uh, uh, generation of big data will be more with concern to retail sears is the biggest company which is generating big data and i want to show you how big data has been uh, produced by the sears and how sears is taking care about the big data so uh, it is a hidden treasure of the uh, sears frankly speaking sears uh, uh, used to uh, perform its uh, analysis by using uh, Oracle uh, on Teradata. So it used to perform the analysis by using the Oracle. But later on, or, uh, later on, Seed started making use of Hadoop. Why Seed started making use of Hadoop? Because Seed started getting own not only the structured data. As long as Seed was working with structured data, Oracle was very fine. Using Oracle, people used to make use of the analysis happily. But with concern to uh, unstructured data, because Sears company, as long as the, uh, it was working with structured data, because I have shown you the graph of how unstructured data was exploiting. I have shown you the graph of how unstructured data, uh, uh, data was exploiting. So as long as the company was getting the structured data, uh, uh, Sears company uh, uh, working with Oracle uh, to perform the analysis. But uh, as soon as the seed is getting the structured data, unstructured data, semi-structured data, all mixture of data when seed started getting, Oracle got uh, uh, failed. Why? Because with Oracle, we can perform only structured data analysis, but not the unstructured data analysis. That becomes a problem now. Now, seed started making use of Hadoop now. Seed started making use of Hadoop. So, till now, in our discussion, we have discussion, we have discussed what is a big data and how big data is arising and how big data is uh, uh, getting uh, from all the parts, from web and retailing, from telecommunication, banks and financials, from retail section, from all the zones we have seen. 
Now, the question for all the big data problems is the answer is what? The Hadoop is the answer for the big data. What is a big data and what are what is the Hadoop that we are going to see now? We have covered the big data. So, in big data, uh, we have seen the limitations of existing data analytics architecture. So, what are the limitations are there is only 10% of data is available, remaining 90% is completely archived here. So, it becomes slow here and the only working is possible with consent to RDBMS, but remaining is not possible here. So, that is the different, that is the uh, limitations uh, with consent to data analytics uh, architecture. With coming to the, uh, what kind of solution we can do for that is, we are going to combine storage computer layer. What is the meaning of that here? We are going to mix up with the Hadoop storage plus compute grid. That means what? We are going to enhance the HDFS that is called as the Hadoop distributed file system architecture we are going to use here. So, uh, this is a solution uh, and from the previous uh, slide, we have seen the drawbacks. Now, we have started providing the solution. Like uh, I'm giving a small example, Sears has moved to 300 nodes Hadoop cluster to keep 100% of its data available for processing rather than only for 10%. So how these people previously in the previous slide we have seen only 10% data was uh, used for processing and remaining 90% was in archive state. But now it is now changed completely. All 100% data is available and what was the solution previously 10% was using because of non-Hadoop solution. But with the Hadoop solution, we are making use of what 100% of data can be used here. So how Hadoop is perform performing its job, we are going to see now. So before going ahead, uh, I would like to uh, talk about what is a Hadoop. Then we are going to go to the previous slides. So Hadoop is a, Apache Hadoop is a framework which allows for distributed processing of large data sets across clusters of commodity computers using simple programming model. So what is the Apache Hadoop? Apache Hadoop is a, a framework, an environment which allows for distributed processing and on large data sets. So now the question is, uh, will Hadoop will not work for uh, small data sets? Hadoop will work for small data sets also, but the power will come when you put large data sets. When you do more data sets, it is something like giving the professor uh, to teach for a uh, LKG class. It does not mean that the professor will not teach uh, the ABCD, but the capability of the professor is not fit for the LKG. It is, it is for some uh, good engineering people, it will be more beneficial. The same manner, Hadoop is for large data sets. Uh, it can process small data sets also, but the power of the Hadoop will come when you process large data sets. So, it is an open source data management with scale out storage and distributed processing that is about the Hadoop. So we are going to go back with the previous, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yeah, yes, Hadoop is working on DFS. What is a DFS? DFS is nothing but distributed file system. What is a distributed file system is the, if you take an example, so uh, whatever the, uh, uh, the DFS which is working in Hadoop is a HDFS that is called as Hadoop distributed file system, right? It is a Hadoop distributed file system that is called HDFS, right? So, we have a one machine and I have a one terabyte of data. We have a one machine and I have a one terabyte of data and this one machine with the four IO channels and each channel of 100 Mbps speed. So, to process this 1 terabyte of data, it is taking nearly 45 minutes of time to process the 1 terabyte of data. Whereas, if you take the distributed file system with 10 machines, 10 machines and all these 10 machines are what? They are what? Commodity inexpensive hardware. They don't, they don't, they don't, they does not require high expenditure or a high configuration and all, they does not require. They are all uh, commodity inexpensive hardware. That means what? Whatever the machines are there in our laboratories, which are completely idle, we are not making use of it. Why we are not making use of it? By thinking that its RAM is very less, its processor is very slow, uh, the hard disk is very less. Something like that. By keeping some um, um, points in our mind, we are not making use of those machines. But now the time came to make use of all those machines now, right? 
So we have uh, the 10 machines we are having, for example, and the 10 machines with the same 4 IO channels, here also 4 IO, 4 input output channels, here also 100 Mbps speed. To perform 1 terabyte data with distributed file system architecture, it takes, it is taking nearly, it is taking just simply 4.5 minutes of time. Whereas to process this one terabyte of data with four I/O channels, it is taking 45 minutes of time. And whereas it is the distributed file system that is called as a Hadoop distributed file system, is taking 4.4.4.5 minutes of time. It is so wonderful. There is a drastic change. So there is a lot of difference between 45 and 4.5 minutes of time. So like this, the working of Hadoop uh, works in the distributed file system. And if you go to the differentiating factors, how, like I have told you that uh, uh, to provide a solution for the big data, Hadoop is playing a, a vital role uh, because what is the Hadoop? Hadoop is a uh, process the uh, large data sets over distributed, distributed commodity of hardware. How it pro 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 process it? Because of its differentiating factors. It has got some differentiating factors. What kind of differentiating factors it has is, it is accessible. The first important is, it is accessible is one differentiating factors. It can access over uh, any at any uh, commodity of hardware here. For example, how the Hadoop distributed file system works is, we are having the working of Hadoop distributed file system is based on master slave architecture. The working of distributed files, Hadoop distributed file system is based on master slave architecture. So we have a master node and we have a slave nodes here. We have a slave nodes here. I have got a slave nodes here all. So all these master nodes, sorry, all these slave nodes will work on the basis of the instructions of the master node. So master node will say, hey, you are free, you work it, you are free, you are free, you work it, you work it, like this. So that means what? The working of master slave architecture is like uh, how we are working on a uh, software company, uh, people associated with their programmers, uh, team leads, all those things. So in that manner, uh, we are going to work in the uh, Hadoop distributed file system, right? So the, what are the differentiating factors of Hadoop is? The differentiating factors of Hadoop is it is accessible everywhere. And uh, its architecture is very simple because it is based on simple uh, master slave architecture. And it is robust. Why it is robust here? It is robust because it, can, it has got a rich set of powerful flexibility is there. We can extend it at any level. And what is the scalability? Scalability is nothing but, for example, uh, for example, I would like to take the example of Vignance Institute of Information Technology. Just imagine that uh, uh, previous uh, four years back, Vignan was getting only uh, 100 terabytes of or uh, I, uh, some uh, 50 or 10 petabytes of data to process. How much data? 10 petabytes of data. Suddenly, in 2015, uh, there is a drastic improvement in the data of Vignance Institute of Information Technology. Maybe from petabyte, it has gone to zettabyte. Previously, the Vignan Institute of Information Technology working with uh, a cluster with only 40 to 50 nodes. These are all nodes. They are all same. These are all same nodes here. So previously, it was working with only 30 to 40 nodes. But now data has reached to how much now? Zettabytes. Previously, it was working with the petabyte. Now it is reached to zettabyte now. Now it is the necessity. It is the necessity to increase the nodes here. Previously, we are working with what? How many nodes? We are having only 30 nodes, for instance. Now we have extended it to 100 nodes. Why we have extended it to 100 nodes? There is a necessity is there. What is the necessity? We have reached to zettabyte of data, not with the petabyte of data. So like that, it is showing what it is a scalable. We can increase our nodes according to our requirement. So these are all the differentiating factors which is making the Hadoop to stand in an excellent manner. Right. And I would like to make a small comparison here. How Hadoop uh, is about scale and structure here. We will take the RDBMS uh, as a relational database management system, enterprise uh, data warehousing system. No SQL. Yeah, very wonderful. It is a, no SQL is a very wonderful topic. Uh, uh, now in the market, there are a number of uh, no SQL products are there, like uh, HBase. Of course, uh, HBase is a part of uh, Hadoop ecosystem. 
and uh, we have other NoSQL products like MongoDB, uh, Cassandra. Uh, these are all the important NoSQL products. Now the important thing is what is the difference between uh, the SQL and the NoSQL. The difference between SQL and the NoSQL is here if you take Okay, okay, something wrong here. Uh, okay. I'll start here. Okay, not an issue. I'll be, I'll work with this. Uh, yeah, with my pen here, I'll go to work here. Not an issue. So coming to the SQL and no SQL, right? So uh, people generally think that no SQL is means only we are saying no to SQL. No, 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 no. It is absolutely wrong. The meaning of no SQL is nothing but not only SQL. What is the meaning of not only? Not only we know something else is there along with the SQL. That is called as no SQL, right? So structured query language is there. That means SQL part is there and in the no SQL also. Along with the SQL, something extra is there. That is called as what? No SQL. So no SQL is nothing but here, not only SQL. The meaning of no not SQL is nothing but here. It is going to handle structured data as well as unstructured data, semi-structured all. But with concern to SQL, it is going to handle only structured data. The market has moved to no SQL. Why the market has moved to no SQL? Generation of big data is more. Why generation of, generation of big data is more? Because generating lots of unstructured data. From where you are getting lots of unstructured data, Facebook, Twitter, of course, I have told you the example from telecommunication side, from retail, from web and detailing, all those things in the previous slides we have seen. Right. So, coming to the uh, head of here. So, RDBMS is pure structured, whereas with concern to head of here, it is a multi and unstructured it is, right. And with concern to processing, it is limited processing and sometimes no data processing. Like unstructured data is you are going to get. Uh, RDBMS will say, no, I can't, I am unable and RDBMS will certainly raise the raise his hand complete, uh, perfectly and uh, uh, just for an information say, to meet the market strategy, Oracle is very famous for structured query language. Now, Oracle Corporation has started its own product that is called as a NoSQL. Everybody knows that Oracle is very famous uh, for RDBMS, everybody makes use of Oracle. But uh, to meet the market strategy, Oracle also launched its NoSQL product, right? So, whereas with coming to the Hadoop here, its processing is coupled with data. Governance here, it is standard and structured because in RDBMS, we are going to have a structured data, employee number, employee name, something like that, it's structured here. This governance is what? Structured. It is loosely structured. Whenever you want, whatever you want, you can add here. Schema, schema is required whenever you are going to write, whenever you are putting insert, update and all, without schema you can't write, you cannot insert, you cannot update. Whereas schema is literally required whenever you are performing read with consent to Hadoop, whenever you are performing reading, you require schema. What is schema? Employee number, employee name, all those things, right? Of course, data types and all those things. With consent to speed, RDBMS is more faster. Why RDBMS is more faster? Because in RDBMS, we have a concept of indexing. With the indexing concept, we can retrieve more data faster. But with concern to Hadoop, writing is more faster here. Whereas here, reading is more faster here. Coming to the cost of license here, it is software license here. But here, we need to take a support only because as it is open source, so wherever required, we are going to take the support only license. Resources are known entity here, but here, Resources are growing and growing, growing and growing. How it is growing and growing? We have got number of uh, added eco components are there. And it is best fit for uh, processing unstructured data, data discovery, and for massive storage and processing. It is best fit for all these things, right? So we are going to move to the next slides. We have covered uh, Hadoop distributed file system, the importance, what is the Hadoop. Yeah, of course, coming to the Hadoop uh, uh, characteristics also, it is reliable, economical. Yeah, the market has taken wide place for the Hadoop because of its economical. Because Hadoop is working on master slave architecture. In master slave architecture, all slaves are commodity inexpensive hardware. 
if the company will say that uh, you, you implement, you perform the analysis, uh, you invest some uh, you know, 5 to 6 crores of rupees means uh, the company will think for a while and it, uh, the company will say that uh, give me 1 month, 2 months of time because they have to invest. But with concern to Hadoop uh, architecture and all, it's, they will not, there is no way to think. Why? Because whatever the inexpensive commodity hardware are remaining for us, uh, we are going to use it. We are going to put it in a cluster. We are going to make use them as a host and we are going to make use of their productive use also. Even though what amount of RAM is there, what amount of processor is there, what, am, what amount of hard disk is there, we are going to make use of it. Right? So, reliability, flexibility. What is the meaning of flexibility? Flexibility is nothing but Hadoop can process structured data as well as unstructured data. If, if, if it can process only unstructured, it is becomes a completely in, um, in, uh, inflexible for us. No? So it's completely, it becomes fails. But it is saying I can process uh, structured data as well as unstructured data. So these are the uh, some important uh, characteristics of Hadoop that is called the reliability, flexibility, economical and scalability. Right. Yeah, we came into the, the most important uh, part, uh, short and sweet. Uh, I would like to have a small revise, then I'm going to go into the Hadoop ecosystem. So, uh, the time is 4-5. Uh, we have covered uh, uh, the, what is big data, what kind of uh, big data uh, data consists of, what kind of uh, uh, problems we have faced with big data, uh, with the processing the big data with the help of old traditional mechanisms. We faced problems regarding the searching, storing, uh, analysis and all we have seen the problems and we have started making use of Hadoop and how Hadoop has covered the uh, problems, uh, what kind of analysis we can do, all those things we have seen in the previous slides. Yeah. Now we are in, we are almost, we, we came to the important phase of the Hadoop here, uh, big data Hadoop here. Yeah, this is called as the Hadoop ecosystem. It is our Hadoop ecosystem. In this Hadoop ecosystem, Hive is one component, Pig is one component, Maho is one component, MapReduce is one more component, HBase is one component, HDFS is one more component, right? So, for an understanding purpose, I will use some uh, uh, normal uh, the daily use terminologies for your understanding purpose but it is not related to the Hadoop ecosystem for understanding purpose only I am using it right. So Hive is for data warehousing system right. So Hive and Pig are just normally we call it as a two eyes. What are two eyes? With two our eyes we have two eyes right. We have one eye and another eye. So when you see with our eyes, then only we can perform the analysis. Otherwise, we cannot perform the analysis. You are walking on the road. You are walking on the road like this. Suddenly, a snake came, right? Suddenly, a snake came here. Since you have seen with two eyes, immediately you are going to take an analysis. What analysis? Suddenly, you will jump to some other place, safe place. So that is called as the high wind pig. That is called the quick analysis. So, with the help of high wind pig, you can perform the quick analysis. So, high and pig eco components are basically used by the researchers basically. The people who are doing the quick uh, uh, research analysis, for them, this high and pig is going to take a very important place. That is why it is called a data warehousing system and data analysis. So, quick analysis we can perform. How quick analysis can be performed? Because you don't need to write too much of heavy code here. Just uh, high is a query language. So, normal queries you can write here as like structured query language but not as simple as like the same SQL, don't uh, 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 compare like that, just for understanding purpose I am using it. And pig, uh, pig or pig Latin is for writing scripting, so you don't need to put more focus towards writing program for hive and pig. So generally uh, there is a small uh, confusion uh, among various uh, learners uh, stating that Hadoop is very difficult, no, frankly speaking it is very simple. Hardly, you know, to, you, you need to put your stress only in the MapReduce framework, which is the programming part, right? Remaining is all are simple things only. You don't need to uh, take a lot of pressure on this, right? So, Hive and Pig are called as analysis tools where we can perform quick analysis. They are just like a two eyes. What about Mahoth? Mahoth is a Sanskrit word. It's a machine learning actually, but for understanding purpose, I'm giving. Mahout is a Sanskrit word. Mahout is nothing but the person who rides the elephant or who controls the elephant is a Mahout. 
So, what the Mahot will do? Mahot will ride the elephant and he will control. Stop here. Do he do do this? Do that? Something like that. So here also, with the help of Mahot, we are going to control the cluster. So the people who are learning Hadoop, they are called as Hadoopers, and Hadoopers can settle their careers in three ways. In three ways. What are the three ways? As a Hadoop administrators, as a Hadoop developers, as a Hadoop testers. Something like the people. As I said, you Hadoop works on. As I said, you Hadoop works on master-slave architecture. So these are all mas these are all one master. We are having we are having slaves here, right? So uh, <clears throat> how many nodes should work? How many nodes should work? How many how many nodes should process? All that instructions will be given for the given by the Hadoop Hadoop administrator. So uh, the administration job is done by the Mahot here, and programming part is done by the uh, Hadoop developers. And how the nodes are working and all that is going to be tested by the Hadoop testers. But there is a more demand for the Hadoop developers because we don't require more number of administrators. We don't require more number of testers. We require we require more number of uh, developers only, right? Yeah. So that is about the Maho. What about Uzi here? Uzi is nothing but it's a workflow system. It it is going to take the scheduling. Hey, you you need to perform this job. You need to perform that job. That scheduling job is going to be performed by the Uzi. So Uzi is a workflow system. It's like a brain thinking. So you know, what kind of scheduling has to be implemented? Uh, what kind of mechanisms has to be implemented? So all those things are going to be implemented in the Uzi. Like uh, generally, the Hadoop uh, distributed file system follows the uh, FICO mechanisms only. First in, first out mechanism only it performs. But uh, it is not mandated to work with only FICO mechanism. We can implement other mechanisms also. As a research point of view, we can implement other mechanisms. We can, I can implement uh, uh, the round robin mechanism or the last in first out or something like that. I can implement. But we need to uh, that that instructions are going to be given by the Uzi, which is a workflow system, right? What about MapReduce programming? MapReduce is the heart of the Hadoop ecosystem. Like for a human being, <coughs> I'm sorry, for any human being, any part of the human being is not working. He can, he or she can live for uh, uh, maybe a month or two months or a year, something like that. But if that is not working, he will not live. He will immediately die. The same manner, if MapReduce is not working. The complete cluster will die. Complete cluster will not work because even though you are not writing program in the hive, even though you are not writing program in the pig, it is internally it will generate what code? Map reduce code only. So MR coding is very important part and it is an important module of the Hadoop ecosystem. If time permits, we will uh, see in the next uh, webinars regarding the uh, Map reduce because it's a major part of the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, in that we can see about how the program works, how practically the MapReduce works in the cluster, all those things we can see. So MapReduce is the heart of the uh, Hadoop ecosystem, right? What about HBase? HBase is like a stomach. It's like storage part. Whatever the food you are eating, you are putting in your stomach here, right? And H what is the HD HDFS? HDFS is a Hadoop distributed file system. It is also for massive storage. You can store whatever data is there, right? Now the most important point here is some says that I don't know about all these things. I don't know what is Hadoop. I don't know about Hadoop uh, ecosystem. What is Hive, Pig, and all? Uh, previously, I used to maintain my data by using the old mechanisms that is called as structured data using MS Excel and all. And uh, I'm having some unstructured data like in a uh, web files, video logs, all those uh, data files are there. Which are stored somewhere, uh, but I am not uh, doing performing any analysis and all. So I want to perform all those job means. What I have to do now? If you want to perform those analysis by using Hadoop ecosystem, then I am going to use a scoop and plume. Scoop is nothing but a using the scoop. Scoop is a is a tool mechanism tool we can use with the help of scoop. We can import and export structured data into the HDFS. Please uh, understand. To perform any kind of analysis, first of all, all data need to be kept in the HDFS. It is mandatory. Unless and until you put into the HDFS, you cannot you cannot perform any analysis, right? So I am putting data into HDFS. You can write MapReduce programming by writing Java programming, and you can perform the analysis. I am very weak in Java. I can't write programming. I can't write programming. Then I can. 
make use of hive and or I can make use of pig to perform the analysis. But most important thing is to before performing analysis, it is mandated to put into the HDFS because we need to put into the HDFS. The file system has the, the data has to be kept into the file system first of all. Unless until we cannot perform any of our analytical jobs. Similarly, if I am having unstructured data, so what are unstructured data? So might you are seeing the images, web logs, video files, audio files, you want to perform the analysis. Then I can make use of plume and using the plume tool, I am going to put my unstructured data into the HDFS. Again to perform the analysis, I may write my MapReduce programming or I may implement Hive or I may implement PIG to perform the analysis. So like this, the Hadoop ecosystem works on, right? Short and sweet, I would like to revise this because as it is a very important part. Uh, the time is 4.15. I think uh, we cannot cover the remaining, but I will try to uh, cover the Hadoop architecture and then uh, uh, we may uh, wind the session because hardly 15 minutes time is there for me. Right. Coming to the Hadoop ecosystem, Hive and Pig are my analytical tools. Uh, something like two eyes, these are, this is my stomach, this is my heart, my two legs to import and export data into the HDFS. So I can import and if, uh, I can export the unstructured data using the plume to the HDFS. Using the scoop, I can import uh, or export into the uh, HDFS and then I can perform the analysis either by writing MapReduce or either by writing Hive or either by writing Pig Scripting, right? So, uh, like this, the Hadoop ecosystem works on. So, the ultimate thing is that we need to put our data into the HDFS. So, lot of analysis we can perform. We can take weather data sets. We can take, uh, of course, weather is a very simple thing because uh, a couple of 1900 or a couple of uh, 50, 60 years of data we can take and we can do the analysis. What kind of analysis we can do? which year has got a less temperature, which year has got a highest temperature. And with that, uh, we can uh, make a study that how uh, about our ecosystem of our uh, nature, we can find out uh, how the uh, temperature is raising, what are the reasons of that. So a uh, lot of research can be implemented by taking the temperature data sets also. Okay. And similarly, we can take health data sets also. Health data sets are wonderful project actually. Uh, we can perform analysis by performing the health data sets where it shows uh, what kind of diseases more people are affected. Like if you take the data sets of uh, one hospital, maybe Apollo or something like that, uh, what kind of diseases are getting more, that kind of analysis we can do with the help of the data sets of the patients. So number of analysis can be done uh, uh, with the help of uh, Hadoop ecosystem. Even for the plume also, plume of course, the Facebook is making use of all these things now to perform the analysis now uh, and uh, right now to perform the analysis of Facebook, uh, Hive has been used. Hive has been used by the FB uh, to perform the analysis, right? Uh, so likewise, there are a number of examples can be done uh, even uh, before uh, releasing, releasing the movie. Uh, 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 number of uh, uh, people uh, keeps on tweets. Uh, this song is good. That song is good. Something like that. Uh, the the fans uh, keep on tweets. So with the help of tweets also, they can perform the analysis and they can say that uh, whether this movie is going to be hit or not. Something like that. They, they can make a predictive analysis with the help of uh, uh, unstructured data, which can be performed with the help of plume. Of course, scoop is for uh, structured data only. Yeah. This is about Mahut. Of course, I have told you about Mahut. Yeah, we are into the important phase. Uh, Hadoop core components here. Uh, Hadoop core components. So, I would like to make use of my document. Yeah. Yeah. Coming to the Hadoop cluster, or uh, uh, we call it as a uh, the Hadoop architecture, how it works on. The Hadoop cluster is nothing but normally any set of loosely connected or tightly connected computers that work together as a single system is called as a cluster. In simple words, uh, a computer cluster is used for uh, the Hadoop is called as a Hadoop cluster. And Hadoop cluster works on low cost commodity hardware. Because of this reason, the Hadoop has taken a wide place in the 
market right so uh, just uh, as the time is running short actually to discuss about how to cluster uh, a minimum of 30 minutes of time is required but uh, now i'm having only 10 minutes of time uh, but i'll try to complete this job so hadoop cluster this is a hadoop cluster architecture so these are my racks in this racks i'm having a nodes so we have nodes right node 1 node 2 like that in another rack also i'm having a nodes likewise i can have n number of racks right and all these nodes are going to communicate with one another and all these racks are going to communicate with one another with help of what rack switch and these rack switch are going to connect, connect with the core switch and the core switch is going to connect with the hadoop cluster for example i have made a hadoop cluster i have made a hadoop cluster one cluster is in the india another cluster is in germany another cluster is in london right so in this cluster i am having some 1000 nodes are there in this cluster i am having some 1000 uh, nodes and here also i am having 1000 nodes so, so with the help of hadoop cluster that means what hadoop is becoming cloudy also these days right so all these clusters i can connect with the help of cloud and now i can get the power of all these 1000 uh, nodes 1000 nodes that means 3000 power of nodes i can get it and i can process it that means uh, we can see that uh, there are number of applications has been stopped the number of applications has been stopped because of lack of resources why there is a lack of resources there because for the calculation of cancer cells and all we require lots and lots of resources uh, so uh, since resources is lacking uh, the the, uh, uh, the result is taking nearly 10 days of time likewise even uh, big scientific calculations also taking lot of time to calculate because of lack of resources now i can join uh, through the hadoop cloud and i can get the power of uh, Uh, cluster of uh, uh, germany cluster of uh, london cluster of india and all the 3000 power i can take and i can i can calculate it it is there is no need to uh, search for a, a big uh, hard disk or a heavy amount of ram no need of spending too much of time and we can make use of all these things happily right so you can see that the same image i am extracting for your understanding purpose so we have these are all uh, the most important thing right so we have a hadoop cluster so we have nodes here so this green color is your master node so this is your master node here this is your slave nodes here in master node we have two domains what are the two domains name node and job tracker in slave nodes so we have got two domains what are the two domains data node and task tracker right so i already told you that the hadoop cluster works on the basis of master slave architecture so master in the master node we have got two domains what are the two domains name node and job tracker in slave node, in slave machines also domains will be running right so what are the uh, two domains will be running data node and task trackers right so this is the architecture of the hadoop cluster so to make it more understandable i have divided the cluster into three components what are the three components client master and slave client master and slave right if you take like this look at like this so client is there what the client wants client client wants only one thing client will give some data maybe unstructured data or structured data some data he will give that's it what the client want client want analysis clients want what analysis only for example if you take the analysis if you take the uh, any college a vignans institute of information technology i would like to take so in that what is going to happen is every now and then we want to perform the analysis which how many students has been placed how many students has been passed how many students has been failed so all these are what analysis every now and then we want to perform the analysis right so to perform the client wants that the client will give the data and the client only wants the result analysis the client will never bother about how master is working how slaves are working he will never bother about all those things right so client is going to interact the map reduce and the hdfs right so in hdfs we are having two domains that is called as the name node and secondary name node so that is called as the master node here so in slave nodes we have got these are all slave nodes the purple colors are all your slave nodes here so in slave nodes two more domains are running that's called data node and task tracker task tracker is a slave to the job tracker and uh, data node is a slave to the name node right task tracker is a slave to the job tracker that means uh, 
for your understanding purpose we have a master node we have a slave node in every slave node two diamonds will be running what is that that is called as data node and another is task tracker here also data node and task tracker so these are nodes are working here so on to work on this data the name node the name node will give data name node will not will not store anything name node because master node does not stores any information all information will be stored at the slaves only all burdens are on the slaves only see that's the difference between the client server architecture and master slave architecture in client server architecture the whole burden will be taken by the server in master slave architecture the master will try to keep all the burden on the slaves only right so the name node will put data say and take care of data once data has been given some programming mechanism some algorithm has to be written to perform the analysis that algorithm is implemented with the help of the task tracker and that job is done by the job tracker and that programming job is done with the help of what map reduce or by hive or pick and name node will keep information regarding the data node how data node is working because at every minute the data node has to supply a heartbeat to the master node hey i'm alive i'm doing your work because we are going to get the heartbeat in our body also if heartbeat is not there is one case similarly here also every minute the node the slave node is going to send a heartbeat there is a heartbeat mechanism is there there is inbuilt mechanism is there in the hadoop architecture right so the slave will give a heartbeat to the master saying that i am alive i am alive otherwise if heartbeat is not getting from the slave to the master means what the node is not working something goes wrong the, 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 there, there may be some hardware failure then what is going to happen at the time immediately there will be a fault tolerance if employee is leaving in the organization is the employee will not the organization will not stop immediately what they will do immediately they will appoint one more person or the person who is in the standby mode they will make it active similarly this node is now free he is and this node is not working what is going to happen this node is not working because of some hardware failure immediately that job is going to be carried by the other node that is called what fault tolerance right so so we have a client so client submits map reduce jobs describes how data should be processed what is your analysis what is your requirement i want how many students has been placed in the year of 2014 in which company they have been placed in the college so and ultimately the client retrieves the things what it retrieves the kind of students have been placed in what companies that is the analysis right uh coming to the master node the master node consists of three things name node secondary name node right and job tracker so job tracker is for for the purpose of writing the map reduce to write the job so job for a data node for slave nodes two dimensions will be running what is that data node and task tracker data node will be keeping about the data and task tracker will be performing the task how task is going to perform with help of the map reduce coding what about name node here name node does not store the file but only the files metadata what is the metadata metadata is nothing but data about data what kind of file the slaves has stored how much amount of file how much amount of data has been stored by the slaves and uh, what kind of processing the slave node is performing whether the data is having read permission or write permission all those things are going to be stored in the metadata right so name node oversees the health of data node and coordinates access to the data stored in the data node right what about job tracker job tracker coordinates the parallel processing of data using the map reduce right what about secondary name node secondary name node is nothing but here see i said that the mass the hadoop works on the master slave architecture so i have a master i have a slaves i said that if this slave is not working immediately there will be a fault tolerance and this will be started working similarly we can assume that even even the name node also may not work if there is no such rule thumb rule that only slave nodes will always only fail there is a failure in the in the slave nodes no 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 name node also may not work sometimes there will name node is also a machine he, the name node may also get some failures hard disk problem or some some problem it may also get so at that time name node is storing what it's not storing the data data is stored by the slave nodes name node is storing the metadata what is metadata data about data if metadata is lost means my god it will be big issue for us that is why secondary name node what it will do 
secondary name node what it will do is every one hour it will go to the, it will connect to the name node and it will take the metadata information so here also there is a fault tolerance is there if name node not working we can get the metadata information from the secondary name node right so the job of secondary name node the job of secondary name node is to contact name node in a periodic manner after some interval interval of time by default it is one hour we can change it for two hours or half an hour depending upon our requirement right so short and sweet i am repeating once again right as the time is 429 right we have a master node we have slave nodes in the master node we have got a three dimension job tracker name node and secondary name node job tracker task tracker task tracker and data node are two dimensions running in the slave machine task tracker is a slave to the job tracker and data node is a slave to the name node right and uh, once the data has been given once the data has been given to the slaves task has to be implemented that means what some algorithm has to be implemented with the help of what map reduce program right so like this the architecture of the hadoop works you can see the hadoop architecture client connecting with the master node these are all your slave nodes in all these slave nodes what is happening we are having the uh, uh, the data node and the task tracker in master node we have a two domain that is called as a name node and the job tracker right in secondary name node we are is going to connect to the master node it's going to take the metadata every one hour or two hours likewise right right the most important thing i would like to do here some important thing is hdfs provides the most important thing when processing is done on data all here in hadoop what is going to happen is when processing is done on the data algorithm is moved across the data nodes rather than the data to the algorithm what is the meaning of this previously if people is having a knowledge of um, jdbc connectivity if i am writing a jdbc program with the help of java program i am connecting to oracle and then i am accessing all data and putting in a cache memory and from there i am printing the data but uh, if since we are connecting to structured data we can put into the cache but if we are connecting to unstructured data it is very difficult but with consent to hadoop it is different what is happening wherever data is there let it be we are not going to move data because moving data is very expensive these days compared to placing the algorithm so that's what we are doing now let it there not not an issue we are going to make use of scoop or we are going to make use of clue to import uh, to import data into the hdfs and then i am going to run my data algorithm because moving the algorithm is simple and cheap compared to the moving the data is very expensive that's what here i am telling when the processing is done on the data algorithm is moved across the data nodes rather than the rather than data to the algorithm that is why it is cheap and it is called as what data locality also and we have a fault tolerance also right uh, so we have covered so many things in our uh, sessions um, almost how the core components how the map reduce has worked and how the hdfs cluster has worked architecture all these things see here we have got name node and data nodes i have placed a name for name node i have kept a rich car because it's a master node for data node it is slave node so i kept a small taxi something like that so the so name node consists of uh, the metadata uh, so metadata consists of list of files list of blocks something like that so all these things we have covered so uh, so today uh, we have covered about the uh, what is big data and what are the importance of big data how hadoop is providing the solution what is a hadoop cluster how uh, the, how the hadoop cluster is playing the important role so uh, all these things uh, we have covered in today's session how job tracker has performed the job uh, i am unable to cover the anatomies of file write and read uh, if uh, some other time i am going to cover uh, the remaining things all these things i am unable to cover all these things as the time is short uh, so we'll cover in the next sessions uh, how the hadoop really works uh, what kind of configuration files are there how map reduce really works uh, all these things we are going to cover Uh, I'd like to have uh, any questions or any clarifications.
somebody is asking for examples of big data. Examples of big data. Yes. So these are all, yeah, these are all the customers who are generating big data, right? So these are all the examples for us. So uh, web and detailing is generating big data. The biggest company is what? eBay is the biggest company which is generating big data. Telecommunication is generating biggest uh, big data. It, uh, the China Mobile is the biggest company. And uh, government, Aadhaar also generated the big data. Next Bio also generated big data with consult to healthcare and life sciences. And JP Morgan Chase also generated a big data with consent to banks and financial services. Sears started working with Hadoop. We previously, Sears used to work with Oracle to perform the analysis. But now Sears started working with the Hadoop. Why? Because Sears previously working with the structured data. But Sears started getting with the, working with structured, unstructured, semi-structured, all kind of data. That is why Sears started making working with the Hadoop. Because it is unable to process the unstructured, semi-structured data by the Oracle. Should just one piece of data be of NTB or NPB? Hello. Should Hello? one should just one piece of data be of NTB yeah. or NPB? Ah, uh, it can be NTBs, NPBs. One piece means just one single record. I, I, yeah, okay, okay, okay. I understood the question. It is something like we are having a block here. So this block, maybe I am going to divide this block. Of course, we have not covered the concept. So this block, we are going to, the basically it is going to divide into 64 MB. It is going to be divided. And this block will be processed at one slave node. Similarly, this block will be processed, processed at one more node. Similarly, another block will be processed at another node. So the entire, maybe a terabyte or a petabyte, one thing, whatever the amount could be, they are going to broke into number of pieces, number of blocks, and then the processing is going to happen. One gene file, maybe few GBs, uh, two NTB. Is it a big data? Yeah. Uh, ah, yes. Obviously, it is a big data. Sorry, sorry, sir, sir, come again the question. One gene file, maybe few GBs to NTB. Is it a big data? Um, obviously, it is a big data. As long as it's increasing its size, it will be big data. As long as it is becoming unstructured, 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 it becomes a big data. It becomes a big data. Can I apply big data in machine learning algorithms? If yes, how? Can I apply machine? Yeah, certainly we can apply machine learning algorithm. Uh, how means we need to show it practically. Uh, if I get a session one more, then I'm going to explain how practically we can apply. But uh, certainly it, we are we are going to apply in the machine learning. It's, uh, it's an important uh, concept and we can apply. There is no not an issue. Is there any other tool for processing big data? Of course, people are making use of Hadoop now. People are making use of in the Hadoop ecosystem. People, some people making use of uh, make, uh, writing MR code, map videos, and some making use of file. Some making use of pig, uh, and uh, some even even people are going for other things like Spark is also there to perform the analytics now uh, because uh, <coughs> MR has got its own limitations because in MR uh, every piece is going to be broken into number of uh, several chunks. And it's, it's, a, it's a little bit time consuming. As every every text has to be broken into map and then aggregation has to be done. So like that to overcome uh, the technology has been upgraded with uh, Spark, uh, these things. So we can perform other, other tools are also there. Uh, we can implement it. Uh, no Looks like real intelligence will be to flume and scoop all appropriate and related data, right? Can this process be automated, say, for given keywords or key maps? Oh, yeah, it can, it can be automated. It can be automated. Because Flume and, uh, Flume and the Scoop tool has meant for that only, to import and export the unstructured and structured data into the HDFS. What is the major difference of Hadoop and Big Data? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit bad for this question, but I would like to answer this question. Big data is a bigger in size. So we have got a lot of data here. 
some data is structured some data is unstructured some data is semi structured don't get confused with semi structured and unstructured a facebook data twitter are all called unstructured data semi structured are what your xml files and all semi structured data structured data everybody knows there is not any issue now these are all big data what the crc is for getting problem as long as crc is working with uh, getting structured data crc was very quite happy but once the crc started all this mixed data then the problem arised so for that purpose the solution is what here hadoop so that is the difference between uh, big uh, big data is always bigger in size it is large data sets where traditional approaches cannot be implemented to perform the analysis why because uh, unable to store massive data capturing is difficult analysis is difficult all these things are difficult just uh, i am taking the example of facebook itself facebook analysis is very difficult task everybody has got facebooks now now big data hadoop is providing a solution for the big data it is a solution the image itself is saying it's a solution right now how big data can be useful for e governance application oh yeah my god it is a wonderful question uh, for e governance uh, how do we place a vital role actually because if you take the example of aadhaar aadhaar has generated so much good data it has taken our image our thumb uh, image and the eyelid information all the information has taken so how the aadhaar how the aadhaar uh, is going to provide that uh, governance is for example just for understanding purpose i will make you give an example just imagine that there is a one guy is there uh, he is driving one big uh, bmw car and every day he is uh, pouring find that this boy is nothing but it's just simply a, a a free boy type he is not doing any work then the then the job over no 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 then the production starts here then the analysis starts here the government plays the vital role here what he will do now what kind of business is performed by his father what kind of job he is doing whether how much what is the an uh, income state of his father and uh, 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 how he is generating that amount uh, is it the black income or a white income uh, is the is it a tax paid or not paid so all these things are going to play a vital role to the governance and governance is possible only with the help of aadhaar and aadhaar governance is only possible with the help of with the help of analysis with the help of analytical tools like hadoop or informatica all these things can be implemented and the fault or sorry the fraud detections welfare schemes who should get the real scheme who welfare scheme scheme should be given like we are having a white ration card is there so we have got some arogya shri is there so who should who are really eligible for all these things that is all concerned with governance that is all possible with the help of aadhaar data only if you perform the aadhaar analytic then all this uh, fraud detections welfare schemes all can be imp implemented for the governance it plays a vital role for the governance ma'am there are a few more questions i will send them to you by email uh, maybe in the next session you can address them okay sir right sir because the time is okay thank you very much for the webinar ma'am thank you sir